Oh, I'm glad you could join me today. You ready to do another little fantastic painting? Super. Today I thought I would do one of the little ovals. That has, that has really become one of the most popular things we've ever introduced in, in this television series. And I've got so many cards and letters from people saying, how about doing some more of those? That I thought I'd do another one day and show you how it's done. So I'll tell you what, let's have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint this little oval with me. And we'll go on up here and get started. The oval here is made from just contact paper. That you can buy at the local hardware grocery store. Just cut a design in it. And it does not necessarily have to be an oval. You can cut squares or octagons or your imagination is your only limit. You can do anything here that you want to do. So let's just do a fun little painting in it. Show you how that's done. Let's start today with the old two inch brush and I'll go right into a touch of the alizarin crimson. Just pull a little of the color out, just a small amount, and tap the brush firmly. Okay, let's go right up here. Let's have a happy little sky in this. Just, just a warm pinkish little sky. Now don't use too much of this crimson, just a little bit. We don't want, we don't want to set this sky on fire. All we want to do is have a nice pinkish glow. There. Okay, maybe even we'll have a, just a little touch of it in the water. How to have some water down here. Okay. And you just can blend this right on out. It's continually mixing with the liquid white. So it gets lighter and lighter the more you blend it. There we go. Okay. That quick you have a you have a nice pinkish little sky. Now then, I think maybe in this one, let's have let's have the sun up here. That's a lot of fun. So I'm going, to, I'm going to use my finger. We'll just go right into a little titanium white and touch. And come right up here and then decide where you want the sun to be. And then just take your finger and draw a little circle. That's all there is to it. That easy. That easy. You can put a sun right in the sky. That helps if it's, if it's sort of round. It <laughs> looks funny if it's all weird shapes. There. And very lightly three hairs and some air, you can just go across and blend it in. And you're all fixed up. Let me wash your brush now. Give it a little shake. <laughs> Redecorate the studio. All right, tell you what. I'm gonna take a lizard and crimson. Lizard and crimson, that's a pretty color, I like that. And a little touch of phthalo blue. So we have crimson and blue. Proportionately, there's much, much more crimson than blue. The blue is so strong in comparison. So quite a bit of crimson, a little bit of blue. Now, that's hard to tell what color it is. Put a little white out here, and then you can, you can take a look-see and see if it's the color you want. I, I think I want a little more into the blue side, so I'm gonna add a little bit more blue. You just keep mixing it till you get it the color you want it, okay? That's better. That's more what I'm looking for. Okay, let me clean my knife off. And we can, we'll get a fan brush. There we go. Take a touch of this color. Just a little bit of it, not much. And let's go right up here. Maybe there's some happy little clouds that live in here. And, and these little clouds, they just sort of, they just sort of float around the sky and have fun all day. Not much paint, very, very little paint. And I'm just barely touching the canvas. Maybe, maybe this cloud comes, shoot, maybe it comes all the way over and gets big again. We don't know. Tiny little circles. Just wherever you want them. There's another one. See? You can just put layer after layer after layer of little clouds here. This is a very, very nice painting. If it's one of your first paintings, this is a good one to do. If you just, just get in, introduced to this technique, this is an excellent painting to do because it works so well. Maybe, oh shoot, maybe down in here, there's some little floaters that just live right in here and wherever you want them. Maybe there's one that comes right on up here, comes right in front of the little sun. Just let your imagination take you wherever you want to go. That easy. You can create all kinds of beautiful little cloud effects. 
I get carried away here, I'll cover up all the pink. But that's all right. There we go. Now maybe, maybe I'll make that one like that. A little bit bigger. I'm going to take a clean, dry, two-inch brush, and very gently, very gently, I'm just going to blend this. Just going to blend it a little. Just enough to sort of bring it all together. And you can also soften it. If you want your cloud to be a little softer, the more you blend it, the lighter it'll become. It'll get lighter and lighter. Softer and softer. So you can grab them, just move them, pull them out. The canvas is wet, so you can move color. You can move it. Now maybe, 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 maybe there's a cloud or two here that's a little stronger, a little darker. So let's go right back up in here, and here's a cloud that's a little darker. It's the same exact color. I'm just applying a little more paint, a little more pressure, so it makes this cloud look like it's darker and stronger and a little bit closer to us. Maybe maybe down in here there's another one. See, but you can create layers of clouds that easy. That easy. And it helps create the illusion of depth in your sky. It's not just one flat old color. You got all kinds of beautiful little things happening. Maybe. Maybe there's another one that floats right down in here. Okay. Now we can go back to our large brush and lightly blend these. Just blend them, bring them together. Then, three hairs and some air. Very gently, very gently. Just blend the entire sky. And a super way to make a very effective little sky, and you can do it. Okay, shoot, that's, that's so much fun. Let's keep going. We use that same color, that same lavender color. Still use a fan brush. What the heck? Just load both sides full of color. And we'll go right back up here. Now, we have to make a big decision. Where does our, where's our horizon or our water line? Maybe it's right about here. I'm just going to take and push in a little bit of color. Just push. Let the bristles sort of bend upward. When you push, maybe you can see it here. Push and bend. See? Come over here. See how it's bending? Like that. That's what we're doing. Just push it and bend it. There. There we go. We'll let that come right on now. Now I'm going to grab it and just gently, little short stroke, little short stroke, just lift it up. Lift up, lift up. Make it look like little trees that are far, far off in the distance, way back here. While I got this color, we'll just pull some down here. Like that. When we get the water in, that'll be our reflection. Okay. And speaking of water, let's put some in. I'll just take some, I'm going to take a little bit of thalo blue here on the brush. Just tap a little color into the, to the bristles. Maybe at least a little touch of the midnight black into it. Just a little black and blue. Okay. Now then, let's come right in here. Right in here. And add some water. Pull from the outside inward. There, see? And the outside in. All we're doing here is just laying some color on the canvas. Okay, now I'll wash my brush. Wash the old brush. That's the fun part of this. Shake him off. <laughs> and beat the devil out of it. Now very easy. Very easy. You can just run right across here and bring all that together. And that'll be our water. Okay, grab the bottom of this. Pull it straight down, straight down, straight down. And go across very lightly. And we have a reflection. Now maybe, maybe there's another little peninsula out here. What the heck? If you want one here, put it in. Maybe it comes right out like that. But do the back one first, create your reflections, and then come in here and do this one. 
layer after layer. Do the thing that's farthest away from you and then work forward. Put a little color down under that for the reflection. Need a reflection. Then we can grab it and lift it upward. Very gentle and very short little strokes. Okay. Now grab our big brush and pull straight down again. Straight down, straight down. There. Go across. And we have instant reflections. I'm going to take a little touch of the liquid white. Put it on the palette and pull it out as flat as I can get it. Just really mash it hard, really. Mm. Now cut across. With that, let's go right up in here and very gently, very easy, we can just cut in a little water line. Just act like you're trying to saw a hole right through the canvas. There we go. See? That sort of separates everything. And makes it nice and pretty. There, little, little ripples here and there, wherever you want them. But all these lines need to be basically straight. If they're not straight, your water looks like it's going to run out on the floor. Get your carpet wet. There. Speaking of carpet, one of the one of the biggest questions I get is, how do you contain all that beading when you're working at home? They make a thing called a brush beater rack. It goes in the bottom of a, a waste paper basket, and you can stick it down in there and shake your brush inside of that basket, and then beat it on this rack. And it'll contain all that splashing and stuff. Because if you do what I'm doing here. You can be the most unpopular person in the house, I guarantee you. Because you can cover a room, change your whole decor in a matter of minutes. So be careful. Let's make a little mountain here. I'll take some black, some blue, little lizard and crimson. Black, blue, and crimson. Okay, pull it out flat, cut across, get our little roll of paint right out of the edge of the knife. Maybe, then maybe we have a mountain that lives right about here. And just sort of decide where you want it and put it in. Put it in. See? All we're worried about at this point is a nice outside edge. We could care less what's happening anywhere but there. Maybe there's another little peak. Maybe it comes down right there. There we go. Okay, scrape off all the excess paint. We'll take a two-inch brush, grab it and give it a little downward pull. That removes the paint and blends it outward. Blends it outward. Okay, maybe underneath here, we want a little reflection. We'll reflect that mountain right into the water. A little bit of color. Just pull it straight down, straight down, straight down, and then go lightly across. And we have the mountain reflected into the water. Let's take some titanium white. We'll put some, put some highlights on that mountain. Pull it out flat, cut across, and once again we get our little roll of paint. That's the way I always load the knife. And let's put some highlights on this mountain. Just touch, no pressure, no pressure, and flow right down the side of the mountain. Tell you what, while I'm doing this, because you've seen this over and over, you know I get, I've, I've mentioned before, people send me all kinds of beautiful photographs of the paintings they're doing and you can't believe what some people are doing and every once in a while I like to stick them on a little board and let you see what people at home are doing and while I'm putting the snow on this mountain take a look at this can you believe can you believe what some of these people are doing and they're learning this from watching the show and just practicing isn't that fantastic Boy, that that just makes me so proud when I see what what people are doing. And if you've sent me a photograph and it's, and it's not on this particular board, I apologize. I'll, I'll try to get it on the next one. But let me hear from you. Send me pictures of what you're doing. I'd love to see them. Love to see them. There we go. Some of those are just, oh, they're spectacular. Isn't that something? I thought you'd like that. And you can do it too. Drag out your brush and give it a try. I'm going to take some white, a little bit of blue, mix it together. Mix it together. We'll make a little shadow color here. Pull it out flat. Once again, cut across and get our little roll of paint. Let's go up here and just drop in the indication of a happy little shadow in these little mountains. There we go. And 
for all the people who sent me photographs that we just showed you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you sharing your talents and, and your work with me and with everyone else. Okay, now we got a little mountain. Take a good, clean, dry brush. And I just want to tap the base of it a little bit, create a little bit of mist. Then lift it upward, 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 upward. Just like that. Yeah, very gentle, very gentle. Okay. Now then, mix up some more of my color here crimson and blue. Throw some black in there too. What the heck? Even a little sap green into it. Okay. Yeah, we can go back to the old fan brush. That's working quite well. Maybe back here, maybe there's some little trees. These are getting a little closer. We're beginning to make out a little detail. Just take the brush and tap downward. Just tap downward. Maybe it comes right on out here, like so. Maybe there's some back in here. We'll make a couple layers. See, that way it'll, another plane, make it look deeper. Deeper, deeper these different planes in your painting. That's what, that's what creates the illusion of depth and distance. And if you're out selling your paintings, that's what, that's what brings that happy buck home. There, maybe, maybe there's a tree right here that's a little stronger. Make out a little more detail on him. Big tough son of a gun. And he's got a friend over here. There they are. Just a couple of those. A little bit of that color underneath. And we take our brush, pull that straight down, and make some reflections for that. Okay, I'm going right back into my liquid white on the knife, and let's put in another water line or two. All you have to do is just cut it in there. See there? That easy. You can do anything here unlimited power on this piece of canvas. All right. Tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab an oval brush, a one inch oval brush, mix up a little more color here. Black, blue, throw some brown in there too. What the heck? Sap green, crimson, long as it's, long as it's dark, I don't care. Okay, let me wipe off the knife. I just wipe that knife on, on paper towels if you wonder where I'm going there. Now, I'm gonna take the oval brush and just tap it. Now, it's sort of different on the end. It's, it's, it's oval. It does some nice things. Okay. Maybe, maybe right in here there's a little, it's a little peninsula that comes out and we're beginning to see more detail. That's the reason I change the brushes here. Okay, push hard, let that come down. That's gonna be the reflections. where your reflections are, pull that part down. I think I've mentioned over and over, when I was a traditional painter, boy, reflections used to drive me crazy. It used to be one of the hardest little things to do, and now it's so simple. I'll grab a, another oval brush. I have several of them going here. Put some yellow, grab some sap green, and all I'm doing is tapping the brush into the paint. Just tap it. Looking for a nice green. Just tap. Okay, let's go right up here, and I want to put all kinds of little grassy looking things right out here on the edge. Mm, that's super. This brush makes some of the nicest little effects. There. And it's easy. All you have to do is just tap. Just tap. Leaving some dark areas so it looks like it's layered. Don't want to, don't want to kill all your dark areas. Shoot, when I got that going, you could maybe up here there lives a little tree. Whatever. But that easy, you can create a tree, take your liner brush, paint thinner, a little bit of brown. Paint thinner is just to thin the paint down. Okay, and let's go right in here and we'll just put a little trunk on that tree. See there? Maybe there's an old stick or two out here. But that easy, you can make a huh, pretty good old tree. Pretty good old tree. Let's have some fun. Going back to my fan brush here. I'll tell you what, 
right about here lives, 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 lives. A nice evergreen. I like to make those just back and forth, back and forth. Let them just fall out of your brush. There's another one. Like so. Do you have to make the decision though? How many evergreens live here? It's up to you. It's up to you. Maybe over here, just put the indication of a couple of little ones. Here's one, you can see a little detail. And we can just pop in some nice, dark, rich color. My brush is too slow. Shoot, let's get serious here. Let's take the old two inch brush. Maybe there's a nice, nice big bush that lives here. There he goes, there he goes. Need a little bit of color under here for our reflection. Just pull it down, pull it down, straight down. Go across. Okay, maybe right in here. I don't know, maybe this comes right on out here. Let's do that, let's have it come right out. Right across like that. Since we have an oval, let's just sort of follow that design. And maybe this goes, maybe there's a, we'll have a big tree right here. I like old big trees. We'll put one right here. All we're doing right now is just putting in some background color. There. Okay. I'm going to take a knife. Didn't put a little water line over here. I need to have a little water line. Don't want this side left out. Just put him in right there. Not easy. Okay, I'm going back to the little oval brush. And here and there, all I want to do is just tap in the indication of a little, little bush. Just layer after layer. However many you want. How many? A little bit of green on the fan brush. Put some highlights on these little evergreens. And let's come right on down here and let's begin dropping in all kinds of little different individual bushes down in here that live. Going into some yellow ochre, some Indian yellow. Every once in a while, at least little touch of the bright red. Just let it sparkle. It makes it nice and pretty. But leave these dark areas in between there. Don't, don't cover all those up. If you do, it's going to get flat. Isn't that a neat little brush, though? There, it'll just put layer after layer. I'll tell you what, let's do. I think it's about time. Put a water line under here, and then let's take the, let's take, pull the oval off and see what we got. Take a knife, scrape in a few little sticks and twigs. Okay, let's watch. Bring the camera right up here so you can see this. And when you take this off, look at there. Isn't that super? <laughs> That's one of the nicest, nicest little effects. I'm going to take the fan brush and go right into some Van Dyke Brown. I knew you'd like that. Really knew you'd like it. Let's have a big tree. Maybe our big tree lives. He lives. We'll just have him go all the way through. Put some bushes down here. Let's just extend these. Let them come right on out of the oval. Breaks the borders. Breaks the borders. Like so. Hmm. Isn't that neat how you can just, you can pull that painting right on out. Let it go. Okay, there's our old big tree. He lives right there. You can begin putting in all kinds of little, little, little things that live in there. Wherever you want them. Just layer after layer. I love these little oval paintings. So I say they're some of the most popular paintings we've ever came up with. Tell you what, let's take a little dark sienna, a little white. Let's put a touch of highlight on this tree here. 
Just a little touch. Boop, 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 boop. Take our liner brush with paint thinner. Go into our brown. Make it very, very thin. Very thin. Okay. If we're going to go out of this border, let's take a little bit of that color and just bring it right on out, too. That easy. Now then, a few little branches and limbs to just let them come right off this little liner brush. And if you have trouble making the paint flow, add more paint thinner. It just means it's, it's, not, it's not thin enough. Okay, take some of the color right on this brush. Let's go right up here and let's begin putting, let's put a few little leaves on here. See how easy those are? Huh. This is just green and yellow. Look at that. Just let them pull right out of the borders. See, and as many or as few as you want in your world. Let's come down here. We'll take some white. The old clock on the wall tells me it's about time to go. But I want to show you right here. Let's put a little sand right here. Just take some white and brown. Just let this blend right on out. Look at there. Really hope you've enjoyed this little oval. Once again, if you haven't tried one of these yet, give them a try. I think you'll find them to be one of the most fun and reward paintings you can do. And from all of us here, happy painting and God bless.